In this video, we solve our second example for the secant method. Example 3.2, let f of x equal x to the sixth minus x minus 1, and our error be 10 to the minus 10. Use the secant method to find x in minus 5, 5. Part a, f of x equals 0 within the error. That's like the previous problem that we did. b, x approximates a root of f of x within and then there's two parts here, an absolute error between iterations smaller than 10 to the minus 10, and then part two, an absolute relative error between iterations that's less than 10 to the minus 10. So for each root we find, we have three parts. So let's remember what these mean. f of x equals zero within error means that f of xn, the absolute value, must be less than the error. That's the kind we did in example one. And then the other two are the absolute error between iterations. So xn minus xn minus one, the absolute value, has to be less than 10 to the minus 10. And here the absolute relative error between iterations. So that's xn minus xn minus one, that's this part here, divided by xn has to be less than 10 to the minus 10. So we're looking at the three different types of errors that are usually required for you to know how to do. So let's get going. We're going to use the program we built last time. So this is our GeoGebra program that we built. We erased all the stuff that we copied here, but we left all our formulas. So if you need to know the formulas, you need to watch the previous video. Okay, so how would we use this worksheet to do the new one? First thing is change the function. So double click on the function and what do we need it to be? x to the sixth minus x minus one. Hit enter, there it is. Ooh, we see two roots. Let's move this over a little bit because I think we had minus five to five, right? So we're seeing two roots. We have to find a way to, to kind of localize those roots with intervals. Our error here is no longer 10 to the minus fourth, so let's double click on it. And let's do one point, capital E, minus 10, so we don't have to count out nine zeros. There we go. And then this is one root here, root of f with initial value two, so we need a root, go down to the second one, f, and let's make it an initial value. Let's just try zero and see if we get it, or minus one we could use zero gives it to us. So let's move this down here a little bit. Now before we start looking for the intervals for these two roots, which are obviously minus one to zero and one to two, let's notice that these roots are nicely spaced. That doesn't always happen in real life. It usually happens when you're, when you're solving problems for college and stuff like that. Okay. So let's open up our spreadsheet and go searching for these intervals. Uh, we go over here and you can notice that I've already set up the two different types of errors. And let's put minus five in here. Hit enter and then we need to add one to that. So that would be equal to L1 plus one. This is our standard way of looking for intervals that bracket roots and then pull this down. Then we want f of that, so equals f of L1. And then we can pull that one down. And we're looking for where it changes sign. And we see right here from one to minus one it changes sign. So this is one of our bracketed intervals. Let's make it yellow. And then another one is from minus one to 61. It, the function changes sign again. So we're looking at this interval here. So we're going to be working once the program minus one zero and looking for the three types of approximations and then working again from one to two and looking for the three types of approximations. So our first one is minus one zero. All the way back here and we change this one to be minus one, hit enter, and this to be zero enter. And if we look over here, we don't have our formulas yet for these two. We can see that we're not within 10 to the minus 10 with our function value. 
let's put these formulas in. So this would be equal to absolute value of Xn is G2, and I think the other one is C2. And we need to ask whether that is less than air. And it's not yet. And this one is equals absolute value. And then we need a double set of parentheses because we need to take G2 minus C2. And then we come out the one parenthesis, divide it by G2, come out the other parenthesis, and ask whether it's smaller than the error. And we should get false here too. False. Okay, so now here we are with everything scrunched down. Remember we want to copy these and then we want to copy the entire line and we're looking for trues. Still all false, 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 false. Oh, there's a true. That's a true for the function value being small. So let's mark that with the green that we know. So we're looking at this one here. And it took nine iterations to get there. So that's our first one that we got. And now let's continue down until we get some trues over here. Oh, these are true now too. So this is true and true. That's for the other types of error. So what do we have? We're so this x here is the one that makes the function value smaller than 10 to the minus 10. And this x value here made the difference between the x values smaller than 10 to the minus 10 and the relative difference less than 10 to the minus 10. So let's put our numbers in here. Uh, let's type it here and then we'll just copy it. So minus 0 0.778089 five nine eight six seven eight and we have a four here so that's the green value let's check that that one works here we want these two parts we want that true to be that's true so this is our answer to the first part of that question let's copy it and go to our table so here is our table set up to put in our answers the start interval was minus one, zero for all three of the first ones. So let's put that in. So minus one, zero here and here. I think we had nine iterations here and 10. We'll go back and check for these two parts. And our number for the first part is still in our memory. Let's check it though, is down here. So that's that and nine and 10. Control C and come back here, put that here, and then come back to our spreadsheet, pick this up, copy it, and we have this answer here and this answer here. So these are our approximations. This is the approximation for x when we just needed the function to be less than 10 to the minus 10. It took us nine iterations. And these are our approximations for x when we needed the absolute error and the absolute relative error to be less than 10 to the minus 10. Okay, let's go on to the other. So the other root was one and two for the interval. So we come up here and find our place for the interval, one here. And everything goes bad because we haven't put the two in, but when we put the two in, it should work. And notice that it's true one level higher. So we're going to white out these. And actually going to erase these two lines. This is true here, and this is true here. So our interval, our iterations for the interval one, two are eight and nine and nine. So we have eight here and nine and nine, and that was for the interval one, two. What was our answer here? So let's copy this into the one answer for the function. And then go back and copy the bottom one in for the bottom two types of error. 
And with that, we are done with this problem.